This is the KJ Show. The KJ Show with host Dr. Katherine Johnson is a mix of breaking news and practical advice on the many ways in which the energy industry can affect you and your family. Catherine will combine energy updates and conversations with leaders in the energy efficiency community. So please welcome your host, Dr. KJ. Hello and welcome to the KJ Show and the Bull Brave TV Network. Today I actually, actually am celebrating National Geothermal Heat Pump Month, which is now in April. I didn't know it was until I have a guest today from CK Energy and um, who's going to be talking about the ways that his utility is promoting geothermal heat pumps for both commercial and residential customers. And for those of you who know me, know I have a soft spot in my heart for geothermal heat pumps. And I'm going to talk about primarily the heat pumps, but there's some really interesting innovations going on with the hot rocks as well. But first, I always have to start with my favorite part of the show. No offense to my guests, but um, it's the stuff you can't make up. And it gets better every week. So this time around, we had, I can't believe this, there's actually a climate lawsuit in Switzerland. Um, and a group of women who are age 64 and over actually filed a lawsuit in Europe. You want to put up the pictures of the ladies? Um, in Switzerland, because they said they were violating, Switzerland violated its their climate rights, their health rights. They, they, the court actually ruled in their favor, marking the first time an international court has ruled on a government's legal obligations regarding climate change. Oh boy, can I see the lawyers lining up for this one. It's clear that future generations are likely to bear an increasingly severe burden of, and the consequences of present failures and emissions to combat climate change, said the lady who started it. President of the European Court um, of Human Rights following the verdict, which cannot be appealed. They basically said, these ladies, that a senior citizen, senior women for climate protection in Switzerland said that the devastating heat waves have, that have permeated Europe have actually created health issues. And that it's Swiss's duty, the government's duty, to protect them from health issues. And that they have an obligation to address it. Really? Seriously? Um, the Swiss victory under the European Convention of Human Rights, all people are legally guaranteed the effective protection from state by state authorities, should be from, by state authorities from serious adverse effects of climate change on their lives, health, well-being, and quality of life. Um, but Switzerland failed to do that because they hadn't met their climate change goals, so they're sued. This is, last time I checked, heat waves were caused by weather events not necessarily attributable climate change no matter how much people would like to think that's true it's not um and now switzerland is buying it over so here come the climate lawyers right running down um this is crazy um and this is you know they also you know i don't know if you realize but spain made uh an island gave it human protections too so now we're going to make islands give them human rights and we're going to allow governments to be sued for violations of climate change it's crazy but on the other end of the spectrum, this is even funnier, um, this next picture is the environmentalists um, have this woman. Her name is Assemblyman Member Gail Pellerin from Santa Cruz. She's a big time environmentalist in California, a Democrat. She was supported by Sierra Club. Um, she's been very pro-environmentalist. Guess what? She also had $2 million invested in fossil fuel companies like Shell, Mobile, Exxon Mobil, Chevron, Dow Chemical, and a mine, a mining enterprise, Freeport McMoment ran. Just days after the Times investigator, the LA Times investigated her, she divested her $2 million portfolio. But don't you think it's a tad bit ironic that this big environmentalist is actually making lots of money off of her investments in fossil fuels? Um, and, you know, she basically sort of said, well... You know, when she was endorsed and elected in 2022, she she made a lot of strong claims about being an environmentalist, but not when the money is uh, at stake, right? Uh, so I just love this. And in a in a really timely follow up, guess what? Despite spending millions and millions and millions of dollars on uh, climate change initiatives in California, no doubt supported by this assembly member. Most of the energy from California comes from natural gas and crude oil that are export, in, in, imported from other countries, including Iraq and Iran, Iran. I don't know why we're doing anything with Iraq. Ecuador, Saudi Arabia, Brazil, 
Mexico, Guyana. We have, California actually imports 93% of their natural gas and 76% of their crude oil. No doubt. And, and, but, but we're spending all this money on climate initiatives. And they're spending all this money to get wind and solar up and running. But apparently it's not working, right? So uh, the, according to the figures from the Energy Information Administration report, the California uh, consumption estimates are actually much higher than any other state. And it said, despite being a sunny, solar-friendly state with ample areas blessed with high wind, California derives 50% of its energy consumption from t- crude oil and another 34% from gas, which makes it one of the highest, 84% makes it one of the highest fossil fuel users in the country. So what does that tell you? Perhaps the wind and the renewable energy isn't working or isn't pushing up enough. So you know what they're going to do? Instead of saying maybe we need to figure out a way not to be importing oil because they do have mining in California, you know what they're doing? Love it. They're going to actually um, ban drilling in California. And instead of recognizing that the energy technologies are quite not ready to catch, pick up the slack, the legislature has decided to end oil production in California, signed by Governor Newsom in 2022, which creates a health protection zones. Uh, the impact will be not to only ban the future drilling, but to improve, uh, invite, impose restrictions, invite more lawsuits, and compel shutdowns of the existing wells. So whatever oil they already have in California, they're not even going to drill for. And instead, they're going to continue to import oil and natural gas from other nations. Whatever happened to energy security? Whatever happened to wanting to use your own resources? It, 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 It boggles the line. And California touts itself as the renewable energy leader with wind and solar and all these things. But guess what? They don't have enough to be self-sufficient. Something's missing in this equation, and I think a little bit, part of it is common sense, and part of it is just saying, you know, I don't really understand why they're doing it. But, you know, when you have an environmentalist lawmaker who actually has a bunch of money in fossil fuels, maybe that's why they don't want to, um, you know, they want to ban drilling, because it's not benefiting them. It's not benefiting um, their, their mines elsewhere and their fuel reserves elsewhere. But I don't think we want to be relying on Iraq and Mexico and and Guyana for our oil in California. I mean, gee whiz, I think there's some there's about to be a better way. And there is a better way. It's called geothermal heat pumps. And we're going to talk about that in the next segment with my uh, first. I'm going to remind everyone what they are and how they work. And then and then I'll have my guest come on from CK Energy, uh, Boyd Lee, who's been doing really innovative stuff with geothermal heat pump installations in his states in his and his utility. So I am Dr. Katherine Johnson, your host on the Bold Brave TV network. You're watching The KJ Show, and I'll be right back. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy easysense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them. 
We discover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And welcome back to the KJ Show on the Bold Brave TV Network. I'm Dr. Katherine Johnson, your host, and today I am talking about geothermal heat pumps because it is the geothermal heat pump month. I, April is officially that according to the International Ground Source Heat Pump Association, or ICSPA. Um, in full disclosure, I used to be very much involved in the geothermal heat pump industry in the 90s. I worked for the Geothermal Heat Pump Consortium and re worked really hard with a lot of utilities, cooperatives, investor-owned utilities, and organizations like ICSPA to promote this technology. Um, this technology is not new. It has been around for a very long time. Uh, in fact, the original, I think some of the earliest installations that I've talked about before were in Switzerland. And then in the 1940s, they, uh, an Ohio professor actually put in the first residential installation. But they've been around for a really long time. It's just taken a lot of effort to get them up and running. And so in our next segment, we'll talk with the Boyd Lee about the ways that his rural electric co-op has been able to make geothermal heat pumps affordable for his members. But the system is really interesting. You want to put up the little graph. I've explained how geothermal heat pumps work before. They basically move the heat from the earth to the house and back again. That's an oversimplification. But they basically through a variety of different ways. They can do it through vertical wells, which is this the example of this. There's also um, other kinds of loops that are basically only six feet deep or so. And they're slinkies. They actually look like the child's toy or there's just general loops. And they can either use water or refrigerant, depending on where the location is. And they basically move like a refrigerator. If in the, in the summer, they take the heat from the house and move it to the ground. And in the winter, they take the heat from the earth and move it in to heat the home. If you have um, another graph, there's another graph that really shows it. Um, this is exactly how it works. And this is actually Boyd's graph, so I'm going to give him credit for it. But the earth is really the battery. And, you know, unlike this battery, it doesn't need to be mined with little children from uh, in lithium and cobalt mines in Africa. This is the earth's you know, the, the sun's energy radiating down in the earth. And actually about at about five or six feet, the temperature is relatively constant. And so you can move the heat back and forth. There's another example of a loop, um, ground loop. It can be, again, like a slinky. It can be uh, circular. It, there's a lot of different configurations. If it's near a lake, it'll have water in it or it'll have refrigerant. But um, there's all different kinds of names. Um, that was one of the missions of the Geothermal Heat Pump Consortium was to actually come up with a name. Um, so, but if you can see that most of the earth, the 46% of the, of the energy that is absorbed in the earth is then used back to move the heat back and forth to your home. You want to use the next graph too. Um, and then the average cost of an installation in, a, in was about $6,500 a ton. But now, thanks to the Biden Inflation Reduction Act and other tax credits, you can actually get it down to $3,500 a ton, which is still, you know, in all fairness, a little more expensive than other types of heating systems. But in the long run, it actually saves an awful lot of money. And we'll talk more about how the co-op, his co-op, has actually helped drive uh, that particular movement to reduce the, the uh, costs. The other really interesting thing about it is you know, geothermal heat pumps go by, you know, a rose by any other name. It is a lots of different names. So ground source loops, earth loops, geo exchange was the name we came up with. Geo energy was the name I really liked. We didn't come up with that. Um, but there was a lot of different ways. But the point is, it's basically earth coupled. I mean, there's all these different ways to describe this basically this heat pump that is basically moving air or moving moving heat to and from using a loop system. And it's you know very interesting. There's more than 1 million geothermal heat pumps provide HVAC services, heating, cooling, and water heating across the world. And the actual, they think it's going to increase, um, some estimates are in the millions. They think it's going to be more than millions by 2050 because it's a really good opportunity. It's electric, which of course the beneficial electrification folks like. Um, and the one, one of my favorite parts about geothermal heat pumps is that they actually, if you have it configured properly, you can actually have it provide heating, cooling, and water heating. So that's three of the major end uses of any house. It, so you're actually really saving energy. 
Other examples and other benefits of geothermal, which I used to talk about all the time, were the fact that it um, it's actually a cleaner technology. They put a lot in schools. They bury the loops in the parking lot, and that becomes like snow melt in the Colorado schools during the winter. Another beautiful you know, benefit it becomes a science project, so the kids in the schools can see how the how the loop is working and how it's configured and designed. And then it's also less less ventilation dust. Um, they put a geothermal heat pump in a Catholic school in uh, Colorado, and I did a case study on it. And the nuns said it was a miracle because none of the children that used to have dust allergies were getting sick anymore because the air was so much cleaner because it wasn't being shuttled through the air conditioning ducts. So it's really interesting how the geothermal heat pumps have been around for a really long time, but have not yet quite caught on. Um, it was one of my friends Paul Boney used to say, geothermal is a technology of the future and probably always will be. Maybe, but I personally think um, geothermal is going to be uh, a, future that, uh, a future that's coming. It's a technology that's coming. Do we have any more graphics on this one? The energy needs of the home? There we go. So the point I, point I wanted to make was that basically geothermal heat pumps really can uh, take up to 50% or more of your home energy use. So most of folks spend their energy heating and cooling the air, comfort, and heating their water, and then, of course, lighting and appliances. Well, I've talked a lot about the lighting and appliances and the weatherization and the, and the energy efficiency veggies. Geothermal is really up there with those renewable energy desserts, but if it's a well-insulated home, then you're going to save tremendously on your energy bill every single month, especially if you can tie in um, the biggest heating loads and energy loads in the home. So uh, that's, do I have any other ones on this slide, Caleb? There it is. So they think that there's 142 million housing units in the United States and seven of them million are then electric. So geothermal could actually become, if it becomes fully in installed in its capacity,